In this video, we are going to talk about how to ask relevant questions when you are taking calls. Hi there, Ninja! Welcome back to my channel. This is Rhea once again, and you are watching Call Center Ninja. I share real stories and tips to enjoy and survive your call center lifestyle. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing by clicking the red subscribe button down below and tap the bell for notifications. Knowing how to ask the right questions will certainly help you in your calls. It will just make your life so much easier. In every call, your customers will already expect that you will be asking uh, some questions for you to get to know them and for you to know how to resolve the issue. But if you are going to ask them irrelevant and unnecessary questions, then there's a great chance the customer will just doubt your ability to help them with their concerns. So it is very important and crucial that you know how to ask the right questions. one is set expectations. So even though your customers are already aware that they will be asked questions when they call, it is still best if you ask permission or if you set expectations because that way you will be able to justify your question and throughout the entire call your customer will trust you that you're just asking those questions because there is a reason and you're not just asking those questions out of nowhere. So to give you a non-industry example, just let's just say you are speaking with a stranger while you are waiting for a ride, and then you tell that stranger, Hi girl, uh, are you going home now? So isn't that too harassing or that's too intrusive, right? Because although your intention is good while you're asking, uh, if that girl is already going home, still that girl might be taken aback because you did not tell her why you're asking that question. Try to compare it with this scenario. Um, hi, uh, I just want to ask you, uh, do you live in Sampaguita Street? Because I saw you there once when you uh, were going to the office. We were in the same building. Oh, okay, because uh, if you want to ride with me on my in my Uber or in my Grab car, maybe you can split the fare. So, something like that, because, you know, you are setting expectations. You're just asking, um, you are trying to justify why you're asking if that person is from Sampaguita Street because you want to split the fare with Uber or Grab car. So, that's the setting expectations part. In a call center industry example, let's just say your customer is calling to ask if the refund is already showing. So, reenactment. Hi, I'm calling because I want to see if my refund to my credit card is already showing. Can I have your credit card number? So, what do you think will the customer feel if you ask that question right away? I mean, it's the right question but you haven't set the right expectations while you're asking the credit card number, even though the customer probably already had an idea, it will still be best to set expectations, right? Because your customer might be taken aback. So compare it to this scenario. Hi, I'm calling because I want to see if my refund to my credit card is already showing. Sure, I'll be glad to check your refund. For me to check your account, may I have your credit card number? My credit card number is 123-456-78910. So by setting ex expectations, you are justifying to the customer that you're asking for the credit card number, which is a sensitive information, because you want to be able to check the account. And without the credit card number, you won't be able to do so. So setting the right expectations is crucial. Another example for the resolution is this. Miss Washington, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about your account so that I can give you the best possible solution to your concerns. Instead of saying, okay, Miss Washington, can you give me your credit card number? How about your address? How about your last transaction? 
So it sounds very transactional, right? So again, it's best to set the right expectations. Tip number two is to use the funnel method. Funnel method. In my previous video, I mentioned a little bit about open-ended and closed-ended questions. And if you use a mix of these questions, you will be more successful in resolving the customer's concern. The funnel method is a very effective technique to get the answers from your customers. So that's the funnel, right? Or you can also think of it as an inverted pyramid. The wide base on top represents your open-ended questions because the open-ended questions allow you to ask um, a question that will let your customer give more um, elaborate answers so that you can get more information, right? So that's the top of your inverted pyramid or your funnel. And you will have to start from there because you want to narrow it down until the end, right? Mr. Gomez, can you please describe to me what you are seeing on your computer screen right now? This will allow Mr. Gomez to explain further what he is seeing on the computer screen. Well, this is best for uh, customer service slash tech support. The second level going down to your funnel is where your probing comes in. Probing is where you dig deeper or you delve deeply into what really caused the issue. So if for your open-ended questions, um, the first line of question, you ask what the customer is seeing on the screen that allows the customer to describe the issue, of course, you'd want additional questions, follow-up questions. This can be a combination of most likely open-ended questions and a little bit of closed-ended questions so that you can learn more about the issue and you will be able to um, resolve it quickly. So you are like an investigator here. You're asking questions so you get the right answer. There must be an underlying cause that you are not discovering just yet. And that is part of your task. So Mr. Gomez, may I know the steps that you already did to try fixing your computer issue? Okay, can you please tell me more about the error messages you received? Right? So these questions dig deeper into what Mr. Gomez really did. That is why his computer is not working. <laughs> the third and last stage of the funnel is asking closed-ended questions. So, by the way, if you haven't watched my previous video, I'll link it up there on the cards. So closed-ended questions are used to <laughs> confirm understanding. Um, usually this happens at the end of the call because you already want to solidify your understanding and you want to know that you and your customer are on the same page. Have you tried restarting your PC? How about clearing your browser history? Did you already clear the cash and cookies? Until you get to the bottom of it all. Until you get to the bottom of the pyramid and you will know how you will move on with the resolution. I hope that helps. Number three is to listen. You already know, listen to the song here in my heart. Okay. I always say this and again, this might sound cliche and I might sound like a broken record already, but I want you to know that listening is one of the most important things you need to do to formulate your follow-up questions. Do not interrupt when your customer is explaining. Listen to the customer's answers, the full entire answers. So you know how to um, ask your follow-up questions because your follow-up questions will be based on what the customer already said to you. And how will you be able to give your follow-up questions if you're not listening to your customer's concerns, right? 
Listening also ensures that your line of questioning is smooth and natural because no one wants to hear someone who talks like a robot or who talks off of a script. Uh, so you would want to make it sound or you would want to make it flow naturally and you can only do that with um, your listening power. So if you want to know more about how to improve your listening skills or how to listen properly during a call, I also have a two-part video about that that I've all already previously published. I'll link it up there or you can check my playlist for call center skills. Number four is be sensitive. The Filipino culture is so much different than the American culture or other Western countries that employ outsourcing. So by being sensitive, I just actually mean to be professional and to choose the right words and the right questions to ask. This means that you really have to ask relevant questions that are directly related to the customer's concern or directly related to resolving um, the issue at hand. Be sensitive in a way that you make an effort to choose the right words um, to use in your questions. And I know this can be difficult because again, we have a different culture from our customers, but I have learned to uh, be sensitive because I could already empathize to these customers. I mean, even though we have different cultures, we probably feel the same way. Sometimes there might be words that we use in our questions that can be offensive or may sound discriminatory to our customers or to your customers. And that is again because in our culture, it might be just okay. So do your best to choose the right words positive and genuine so that your customer will feel at ease when he or she will call you and start having to answer questions from you and your customer will not feel harassed or will not feel intruded and will just trust you with the questions that you ask. I'll give you an example that I have encountered previously. Um, in my previous company, when I worked as a trainer, we offered this product that was uh, marketed for senior citizens and um, high school students. So there was one product for senior citizens and another product for high school students. So I was having a mock call with one of my trainees. I acted as the customer. And then of course, um, he was the representative. So at the beginning of the call, the customer was asking, uh, I want to open a bank account, but I'm not so sure which one or which account would fit me. And then my trainee, who was the representative, um, asked, so are you a senior citizen? And for the other call, another trainee asked, are you a teenager? So you see what I mean? I mean, well, there's nothing wrong with being a senior citizen or a teenager, obviously, and it might just be okay with us, but for some people, it might sound offensive because those questions are somehow irrelevant. I mean, for us, it might mean something because the product is for senior citizens and for teenagers, so you would want to know if that product will best fit the customer, but those are the wrong questions to ask. You wouldn't want to... Um, ask the customer if he or she is a senior citizen or, he or if he or she is a teenager in that case because they might feel that, okay, so what if I'm a senior citizen? So what if I'm a teenager? Does that make any difference? I want to open an account. I'm a customer and I'm a paying customer. I will be. I will be a potential customer. So that's what I mean by being sensitive with the questions that he asks. So always remember that customers should never have to feel like they are being asked a totally random or unrelated question. Well, good thing it was just a mock call and we were able to correct it as soon as possible. So the questions could have been, what kind of benefits or value are you looking to get from a bank account? Or you can say something like, we actually have initial deposit requirements for each type of bank account. So, May I know um, how much you are planning to deposit as a start so that I can check here 
uh, if that initial deposit fits with that type of bank account. So it's just a matter of you know, rewording your question to make it fit and totally um, related to the issue at hand or to the customer's questions. And number five, respond accordingly. So when you ask your customers a question, give time to your customers to actually respond to that question. You know when someone asks one question and then uh, ask another follow-up question without even giving a time for that for the person to answer? Like, do you know where Sabagita Street is? Is it right or left? Or I'll just go straight ahead. So that person will have a hard time answering your question because that person doesn't know where to start answering. So you might not get the right answer that you want or you need. So again, when you ask your customer a question, you know, people need time to think of an answer unless of course the answer is already prepared, right? So be comfortable with silence. Give some time for the customer to answer the question. And when they do respond to your question, make sure that you are there alert and ready to respond right away. And then you can say, oh, thank you for that. So you can respond right away. And so that's about it for today. I hope that you have learned something from my little um, discussion today. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe if you haven't yet. Leave comments below and I'll be glad to answer them. And don't forget, I have uh, videos every Wednesdays and Fridays. And I'll see you on my next videos. Take care and bye-bye.